If you have decided that you want to have a baby, but only if it can be absolutely guaranteed that you have a boy or a girl, then there is only one method for you, IVF with chromosome testing of the embryos. The sex or gender of an embryo is determined by the chromosomes at the time the egg is fertilized. Two X chromosomes, and it's a girl. One X and one Y chromosome, and it's a boy. Find the embryo which has the gender that you want, put that embryo into your uterus, and if it implants, boom, you are pregnant with the gender you want. Nobody will dispute that IVF is king when it comes to gender selection. But IVF is hard to do, and IVF is expensive if you don't have insurance coverage. So is there anything else that works? Unfortunately, nothing else comes close. If you leave it up to chance, about 50% of the babies born will be boys and about 50% will be girls. Most of the techniques that people try to sell you on will not increase your odds any more than maybe 51%. According to one theory, having sex closer to the time of ovulation or positioning yourself during sex so that sperm are released closer to the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, will increase the chances for a boy. Three studies have tried to test this theory. The first two studies came up with opposite results. One said that the chance for a boy was increased and the other found that the chance for a boy was decreased. These studies had various problems which limited their accuracy. However, this study of over 200 couples used highly accurate methods to determine the time of ovulation and had couples keep a diary of when they had sex. Following this method did not increase or decrease the number of boys conceived. Another technique that I get a lot of questions about is called intrauterine insemination or IUI. This is when a doctor puts sperm directly into the uterus instead of the vagina on the day of ovulation. Based on timing and position, you would expect all babies born after IUI to be males. However, this study showed conclusively that half the babies born were boys. Can we just figure out which sperm have a Y chromosome and which ones have an X chromosome and somehow separate them so that only one type of sperm reaches the egg? It sounds simple, but in reality, it is incredibly difficult. Spinning the sperm in a centrifuge doesn't work. Trying to get the sperm to swim through some thick fluid doesn't work. However, there is a very complex technique known as flow cytometry that helps a little bit. In order to separate sperm using flow cytometry, you first have to add a chemical to the sperm called host 33342. Then the sperm are placed in a fluid and moved past an argon laser and an electric field to separate the X and Y sperm. This technique does work. For example, if you were trying to get more sperm with a Y chromosome, you can improve your yield from 50% to about 75%. Unfortunately, this technique was abandoned after the US Food and Drug Administration reviewed the data from a company trying to get approval for it and determined that the risks of this technique outweighed the possible benefits. In particular, there was concern that exposing sperm to harsh laboratory conditions for a prolonged period of time could cause damage to the genetic material. Specifically, they were concerned that the chemical stain used host 33342 caused mutations that could be harmful to a developing embryo. As a result, flow cytometry for sperm selection has not been available in the USA for the last 15 years. There is one other technique that I want to tell you about. Changing the conditions inside a woman's body to improve the odds that the embryos of one gender survive better. Scientists have found that the amount of calories that a woman consumed around the time of conception had a big influence on the gender of the babies they eventually delivered. Specifically, women who consumed the highest amount of calories were 50% more likely to have a boy compared to women who consumed the lowest amount of calories. It was only around the time of conception that this was important. Their diet earlier and later in pregnancy did not matter. They also tried to determine whether a specific vitamin or food was responsible for this effect. After analyzing 133 different food items, they found only one food type was correlated with the gender of a baby. And that food item was breakfast cereal. Yep, you heard me right. The odds of having a male infant were 87 
7% higher for women who consumed one bowl of breakfast cereal daily around the time of conception compared with those who ate one or less bowls of cereal per week. So what is the best method for gender selection? IVF with embryo testing is the hands down winner. Next best is flow cytometry for sperm selection, but that is not available in the USA. Increasing your calories before conception, especially with breakfast cereal, is third best and is inexpensive and completely risk-free. Everything else is a waste of your time and money. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.